Welcome, uh, dear professional colleagues. Welcome to the refresher course in Library Information Science and SIAM platform. So, in this particular discussion, we are going to have an overview of the application of ILSDI standards in library discovery. So, most of you have uh, you know uh, seen in case of union catalogs of uh, you know uh, of many types uh, like uh, WorldCat, IndCat, etc. Actually, it fails to give us the real time item level status for the documents. And this, this can be a serious lacuna or this is considered as a serious lacuna of the present global union catalogs. So, let us start uh, with the definition of union catalog. Then we will be discussing the uh, you know, uh, problems with the present union catalogs as a library discovery system. Then we will be discussing that how ILSDI can improve this particular situation. Uh, this uh, deliberation will also be supported by a you know, uh, screen capture video so that you can configure ILSDI at your end uh, to get rid of the uh, problems uh, you are facing in case of designing union catalog. So, by classical definition, a union catalog it is a list of the combined holdings of several libraries. The modern view is that it is not only a list of uh, holdings, the modern view is that a union catalog is union files of the stocks of several libraries merged into a central database to allow end user to search an array of library catalogs through a single point access interface. So, a single point access interface is very important. So, you cannot just use an ILS to act as an union catalog to handle many library you know data sets which are governed by the many ILSs. So, there to de develop a single point access interface you need to create you know um, you need to create or you need to use a kind of uh, software which is who are, which can give you that kind of interface a single point access interface. Now, the futuristic view of uh, union catalog is slightly different. It says ki a union catalog is a well developed central system that permits both improved search functionality, payment mechanism, direct user services and integration with different kind of journal data sets and full text. So, futuristic view is that uh, union catalog is not only a single point of search, it is not only to retrieve the manifestation level uh, information but it should also retrieve the item level information. Suppose there are uh, two copies of a book available in a participating libraries. So, it should not only show the availability of the that particular book in a given library, but should also show the item level availability or the copy level information in uh, discovery interfaces. So, that most of the union catalog presently available at the global scale and at the na national scales do not provide this facility. What they do? They will show you the copy level information on the head library that in which libraries this particular document is available, but you have to click the respective library open to know the item level availability therein. So, apart from this kind of item level uh, status uh, uh, you know generation, a modern view or the futuristic view of union catalog also uh, tells that most of the OPEC functionalities like fine checking, uh, holdings, reservation placement, uh, profile checking, profile updation all must be available in a discovery interface. So, that needs a discovery interface to talk to the respective ILS or ILS in use you know seamlessly. And ILS DI is a standard developed way back in 2008 by DLF, Digital Library Federation or Digital Library Forum. They developed this particular uh, you know, ILS DI standard to govern the seamless interaction between a discovery and an ILS. So, as I said you that till date most of the national level and global scale union catalog support only finding function of the catalog neglecting the other OPEC functionalities such as uh, real time availability status, holds placement, extended search feature like full text search or uh, you know uh, fine calculation, fine checking, uh, profile updation. So, many of the general OPEC functionalities which are available inside a 
you know um, uh, common library opac are not available at the global scale union catalogs so that is the uh, hard fact or the scenario uh, presently here in the screen you can see that uh, i have displayed the uh, intcat our uh, union catalog for all universities uh, uh, available in india so that is particularly governed by inflipnet and here you see the moment i search something uh, in in intcat it can give me the list of documents and if i click a particular book it can also show me the item level information but not the availability status that means i can know from here that from wh which library it is available but actually at the time of my searching i simply do not know whether the copy is still available in that particular library or not so suppose by guiding uh, got uh, uh, by getting the guidance from incat if i go uh, to a particular library every chance that there i can't get that particular uh, document because it it may be already issued to someone so this kind of practical problems are associated with intcat so item level information is not available only the manifestation level information or the document level information is available now you see another union catalog in india that is called csir knowledge get now csir knowledge get all the csir libraries all 40 42 national libraries are nowadays using koha so koha is oip image compatible so they are harvesting bibliographic records from each koha instances available in different csir lab in a uh, national csir knowledge get which is nothing but a virtual union catalog they have used pkp harvester for this purpose and you see this is basically the interface of virtual union catalog of csir there also you see the minimum bibliographic details is available it also shows this particular book is available in which library but fails to show that the real time item level status of that particular document in that particular library so this is again uh, in a serious lacuna in case of virtual union catalog of csir now if we move to the uh, global scale say for example copac the national union catalog of uk here you see the searching against a book on web scale gives me a series of documents retrieves it retrieves a series of document and at the same time it can show me that in which library a particular book is available so for example any of this library if i select it can show me that the book titles and the uh, library system where it is available now if we click for the holding you know information here you see the uh, limitations of copac so holding information fails to provide the real time item level status in the discovery interface or the union catalog interface what it uh, says or what it actually uh, what it needs you need to click the hyperlink to pack there then the moment you click there you will be going to the respective opac and that opac will serve you the item level uh, you know status that means whether that particular document or copy is available or not actually inside that library so here the real time item level status is also missing now if we come to the uh, national union catalog of uh, australia so it is actually managed by the library australia and uh, the interface is again available through the trove trove you know that it's a uh, you know comprehensive digital library system of the world now here if you search by a particular uh, book here i have uh, you know given a search query on on web scale so it retrieves a set of documents any of this particular document i can click say for example the first one i am clicking so nicely you see to one of the best thing is that it can you know categorize all editions of a particular book uh, against your search so that means trove is completely fr bearized so all works on a given super work can be categorized inside the you know uh, trove so that's a tremendous achievement by trove but here you see the limitation is that these copies are available it also di directs you the libraries but if you click a particular uh, you know uh, you know a particular book or particular copy to know the item level status it again actually directs you to the respective opac in real time it also failed 
to generate the item level status whether that particular copy is available in that library or not so virtual union catalog are basically you know limited by this kind of real time status generation related to copies or related to items now the same is the case with the worldcat you know this is the largest bibliographic uh, data network in the world in every 4 minutes uh, you know one record is added to the world cat 8 billion plus records are there but here you see many participating libraries are there but here also you see uh, a search if you click any of this retrieve book here it will lead you to the uh, you know uh, interface where it can show you that in which libraries these are available but here also you see this is actually not providing you the item level status rather it is actually expecting that you will click this particular hyperlink token you will go there and you will retrieve that information so all national level and global level union catalogs as a discovery interface as an integrated discovery interface fails to generate item level status and the end user interface in other words you can say that the minimum OPEC functionalities are not available in the union catalog uh, at the global scale or at the national scale. So, if we uh, you know, uh, sum up this kind of finding, so first we can say no union catalog either national or global is using any ILS to design the union catalog. So, union catalog is always a kind of discovery interface and which is slightly different from the ILS. Union catalog are not using ILS as end user interface as I told you. Union catalogs are mostly depending on the process of harvesting to gather metadata related to different kind of documents at the manifestation level in a central index inside the discover interface. Most of these services have successfully implemented FRBRI's display as I uh, showed in case of Crow. Uh, they have uh, achieved tremendous you know, success in case of FRBRI's displays. So, that means gathering all manifestation of the same work in the display in the same place that is a good thing. But most of these services implemented deduplication that means suppose one particular uh, book is available from many libraries. So, they are not showing uh, you know uh, collection from the all libraries rather they are basically deduplicating they are showing one particular document and under that it is showing that in which libraries these are available. So, it is also a good thing in the achievement of deduplication in case of virtual union catalog, but unfortunately almost all of this union catalog except one I will be coming to that fail to implement minimum OPEC functionalities like real time item level status, hold placement logging with the ILS credential. Suppose I have my own password uh, login and password in a given ILS. So, why should I use a separate login and password to enter into the virtual union catalog like WorldCat or Trove or IntCat etcetera. So, this kind of minimum OPEC functionalities are missing in case of union catalog. Now, I am coming a particular service which can do it. So, the name of service is Ohio Link Library Catalog. So, it is basically all li academic libraries of Ohio states are combined together under Ohio Link and it is a union catalog. And this union catalog is using a software, it is a commercial software called Opel. Now, that Opel system is basically you know uh, ILSDI compatible. Here you see, here in Ohio Library Catalog, I have searched against the same query web scale. Now, it retrieves around 6 document, if I click any of this document, so it gives me the bibliographic details of this particular book that is the manifestation level information and at the same time you see it says this book is available in 3 libraries and in all 3 libraries the copies are available. So, it can generate item level status in real time. So, it is slightly different from the other global leading union catalogs like Copac, WorldCat, Trope or in, uh, in our country IntCat and CSR virtual union catalog. They all fail to provide the item level information in the virtual uh, union catalog interface, but Opel can do that and it is a combination of around 60 academic libraries in Ohio state in US. Now, the question is that how this Opel or Ohio link can do that. The single most important thing is that Opel is ILSDI compatible. Now, what is ILSDI? 
ILSDI is a protocol developed by Digital Library Federation way back in 2000, uh, uh, you know, uh, 2008 and uh, this int integrated this particular ILSDI uh, you know, uh, system integrated in Opel in 2016 and they successfully demonstrated that how in uh, uh, item level status can be generated in virtual union catalog in real time. So, this is the software called Opal. It is based on uh, this ILSDI as recommended by DLF way back in 2008. And this ILSDI is again a, is based on a standard called Barclay Accord. So, Barclay Accord is, uh, is an agreement between different kind of leading you know um, ILS uh, developer, big libraries. I will be coming into that fact. But before that, you see what is the ILSDI as defined by the Peter Brantley the DLF executive, the then DLF executive director. He says that an ILSDI supports a mix and match ILS discovery platform to suit all local leads. So, that means it is a kind of standard through which an in individual ILS can talk to the discovery or a discovery system can talk to the ILS to generate real time item level status and many OPEC functionalities like uh, fine calculation. Uh, you know profile updates and etc uh, right from the discovery interface. So, user do not have to log on to discovery separately or OPEC separately. All the OPEC function he or she can do right from the discovery interface. So, ILSDI is a uh, standard towards that direction. And here you see the Barclay code signed by big uh, you know uh, ILS uh, producers like Thales, Xlibris, Liblime, Biblio Commons, Sysdings, VTLS. And big libraries are uh, union catalog like OCLC, California Digital Library, etc. So ILSDI is based on it's a it's a it's based on a global treaty. And this is the uh, you know uh, first version of ILSDI published in 2008 version 1.0. The present version is version 1.1. And this is the you know tax group who actually responsible for the development of ILSDI standard. Now, ILSDI standard can be divided into four groups, four broad groups. First group is basically called the data aggregation group. So, here it gives you a set of verbs or set of protocols through which a DLF or a discovery system can harvest metadata or the bibliographic level data from an ILS. Now, the second group is basically related with the real time search uh, you know functions. So, here a discovery system can establish link with the ILS in real time and can fetch real time item level information or availability information in the discovery interface itself both for the authority data as well as for the bibliographic data. Now, the third group is basically related with the pattern functionality. So, it allows a particular a, a, an individual patron of a library of any participating library of the union catalog to log on into the system by using the same login and password through discovery interface. So, by login uh, by giving uh, that particular login and password they can enter into the discovery system. They can write from that discovery interface they can update their profile, they can place hold, they can check uh, you know uh, uh, you know check outs what are the uh, overdue items available, what is the fine, everything they can do right from the discovery interface by using this group of functions that is called patron functionality. And last one is the uh, group 4 that is called OPAC uh, you know embedding. So, that means in real time it can show uh, the item level status in the OPAC as well as uh, support the FRBRI's display uh, where all editions of a particular book all manifestation on a given super work can be combined together or uh, different kind of intermediate format it is also supporting. It supports transforms uh, you know transfer OPEC display inside the uh, discovery system and many more. So, this group uh, 4 is basically linking the OPEC of an individual uh, you know ILS with the discovery interface. Now, if we check the uh, ILSDI support in open source software, there is only one open source ILS that is supporting ILSDI presently that is Koha. So, in this uh, group Koha is basically calling them level, level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4. 
so out of the 25 functions as prescribed by uh, ILSDI so COHA is supporting 17 plus functions so some of the functions like in the level 1 COHA actually not following the ILSDI rather they are supporting the OIPMH for harvesting because COHA is also OIPMH compatible ILS so this is the support uh, level scenario in an open source software called COHA for ILSDI so most of the library management software all over the world are uh, rapidly becoming ILSDI compatibility or uh, achieving ILSDI compatibility to support discovery interface or seamless integration with the discovery system. In, uh, in, in future, it may so happen that uh, most of the ILS will be coming without any OPAC at all. What they will do? they will expose their uh, records bibliographic record through harvesting through ILSDI and the discovery system will harvest and through ILSDI they can also fetch the item level information in real time. So for example you know one particular experimental ILS called Qualiole so they never actually develop the OPAC rather they uh, uh, utilize the discovery interface view find. So, if you are not developing the retrieval interface uh, interface of a given ILS and concentrating only on the workflow management related to different library housekeeping operations, so there half of your labor is uh, you are saving and um, full concentration you can give in the workflow management. So, retrieval will be taken care by the discover interface. So, it is a new trend. So, in future uh, uh, most of the experts think that uh, including Marshall Braiding that uh, in future ILSs will not be having OPAC at all rather they will exposing their metadata through different kind of standard protocol like OIPMH for harvesting, ILSDI for item level information generation etc. Now here if you see this particular uh, you know uh, snapshot you can uh, uh, understand that how ILSDI call work in REST fashion. So here I am uh, you know uh, querying Koha on the top of ILSDI uh, against a biblio item uh, with ID 1 and this biblio item has two copies with ID copy level ID 1 and copy level ID 2. So, if I give that get availability functions here with for the ID is equal to 1 and plus 2 that means I, I want to know also the item level information of two copies available or associated with this particular item, uh, this particular manifestation. So, Koha here you see can show me. So, this is bibliographic uh, document with the ID 1 and this is the item ID 1 and this particular item is available. So, again in the next uh, you know section you see this is the bibliographic ID 1 that means the same document but in this, this case this is the item ID 2 that, that means it is the second copy and this copy also available. So, in this uh, way we can make a query to the ILS in REST fashion to know the uh, you know not only the uh, you know manifestation level information but also the item level information which OIPMH cannot do. OIPMH can harvest metadata at the manifestation level at the record level but not at the item level that can be done through ILSDI. So, same in the same fashion we can go for the uh, pattern level uh, you know information generation through rest fashion get pattern uh, with the id of that particular pattern now if this koha is ilsdi compatible and uh, viewfind is uh, ilsdi compatible then why can't we develop a national union catalog by using this open source software and by utilizing ilsdi so here i am going to show you uh, you know a prototype uh, uh, you know virtual union catalog with five koha instances at the back end ilsdi in the middle layer and viewfind uh, version 4 in the front layer so ils layer five instances of koha are working you know, these are oip image compatible for uh, metadata harvesting ilsdi compatible for item level information generation and in the middle layer ilsdi is working which will help both viewfind and koha to talk with each other seamlessly and at the discovery layer at the font layer we are using viewfind which includes a harvester that can harvest metadata from koha and that can utilize ilsdi to generate real time item level information now there are two issues to uh, 
develop this kind of prototype. First is that suppose there are five Koha instances uh, we have utilized as an experimental uh, test base. So, here all Koha instances will include the same Biblio ID. Say for example, one particular item, the second item will be known as Biblio number 2 in Koha. There is a separate document in Koha instance 2 that is also known by a Biblio item 2 and so so is the case so in all the instances of instances of koha will include different different data sets but id may be matching for the different data sets say for example in my first koha there is a book called prolegomena uh, uh, written by s r ranganathan so that got id 1 so my next uh, koha include a different book with id 1 and third koha instance that uh, includes a different book with uh, the same id so, what will happen if I harvest all uh, metadata from these five instances of Koha and try to index them. So, first Biblio ID 2 will be replaced by the uh, you know Biblio ID 2 came from the second instance, second will be replaced by the Biblio came from the third instance. So, at the end of the indexing process you do not have five different uh, you know um, uh, uh, Biblio records with the same item rather you will have only one with biblio item 2. So, make it very clear. So, this is a problem uh, when you are uh, handling multiple you know uh, ILSS or multiple Koha instances. So, you have to clearly indicate uh, the origin of that particular record with a prefix. So, if you see that particular box, so when I am indexing uh, uh, records coming from the Koha instance 1. I have given the prefix Koha ILSDI1. Similarly, when I am indexing book from the Koha instance 2, I am giving prefix Koha ILS2. Uh, uh, so, that means there may be a biblio called 2 in 5 instances, but that 2 will be represented Koha 1.2 in first instance, Koha 2.2 in the second instance, Koha 3.2 in the third instance, Koha 4.2 in the fourth and Koha 5.2 in the fifth. So, in this way we can differentiate or we can keep individuality of the record inside the discovery interface. Now, there is another issue that is the second issue. In case of any discovery interface, the instance, the driver and the discovery is a one is to one relationship. That means, the moment our user is querying our discovery interface to get a record from a uh, particular Koha instance or a particular ILS. So, discovery interface connects to the driver of that particular ILS or that particular Koha instance and snatch or fetch record or data from that uh, you know in instance. So, it is a one is to one relationship. Instance 1, driver 1, discovery. Instance 2, driver 2, discovery. ILS 1 driver I 1 discovery, ILS 2 driver 2 discovery. So, this this way it is a 1 to 1 relationship and it is very difficult to handle that kind of you know uh, you know uh, interrelationship between an ILS and discovery interface. So, here what we have uh, you know done uh, what, what we have done in our prototype system as co view find supports a multi backend driver what we did we all these five Koha instances are providing data over OIP image for uh, metadata harvesting. Then Koha instance 1 is actually governed by the Koha ILS driver 1, second instance is managed by the driver instance 2, third one is driver instance 3 and so on. Now, instead of placing that drivers, all five drivers in a one is to one relationship with the discovery interface view find, in the middle we have placed a multi backend driver. So, when a request is coming for a particular record which is available for any of these instances, so this discovery interface actually connects to the multi backend driver. Multi backend driver directs discovery connection with the respective uh, you know Koha instance driver, so that in real time it can um, you know fetch uh, item level information from respective Koha instance. Now, you see the result of this prototype architecture. So, this is brief architecture at the back end we have Koha, in the middle we have ILSDI, in the forehead uh, front end we have viewfind 
and there are three options we can make a direct uh, database call so it's a very time lengthy process and uh, quite impossible to handle number of instances or number of different ILSs so the present you, you know uh, system is using ILS DIL call uh, as I shown you in case of Opal but in rest fashion but it's st still not restful but in future ILS DI call will be given in restful fashion and ILS DI integration with the uh, you know discovery will be based on completely based on the rest architecture now suppose in case of uh, you know uh, uh, view find discovery interface as a virtual union catalog or koha cat discovery what you see what we can do this if we search a particular uh, you know, for a particular book like iron ore in india so it can show me this particular book is available now as a user i still i am not i am not logged in inside my discovery interface so the moment i click place place hold so it will ask me to log in first so suppose i am a member of this particular library the library 6 i can select this library so i can give the same login uh, and uh, password the same credential here and i can successfully logged into the discovery system i can successfully place a reservation against a particular document and the moment i place this document so my view find here will connect to that particular instance of koha and will place hold inside the ils and it will report me that your reservation or hold is placed successfully now apart from this uh, hold placement and the common login through discovery interface a user can uh, you know uh, checked uh, history of the checked out items known history find and uh, profile so if i click profile here so all my details will be coming right from here i can update and i can send to my ils or similarly i can see that what uh, is there any fine uh, you know occurred uh, you know uh, in that particular library for me right from the discovery interface i can check which is presently not available in any of the global scale union catalog and you see here the document we placed uh, reservation from the discovery interface actually came inside the OPAC if we check our OPAC later on. So, it proves that through ILSDI your uh, that ILSDI protocol your ILS as well as discovery interface can talk to each other you know seamlessly and they can interact uh, with each other to develop item level information or to generate item level status in real time in the end user interface which is not presently possible in most of the union catalog both in our country and abroad so in future koha is uh, actually planning uh, koha group is actually finalizing their uh, you know rest uh, uh, endpoints so viewfind community is also uh, developed this uh, koha rest driver so in future the ils di uh, protocol will be introduced in a new manner that is completely restful manner and this is the uh, you know koha 18.1 endpoints for rest so future is promising ils di uh, can be utilized for uh, you know generating different different kind of opac functionalities inside the discovery interface so thank you happy learning